Every four years, the American people have their say on who lives in the White House. But this year, the man in the Oval Office is questioning the very system that got him there. They're going to try and steal the election. President Trump is casting doubt on American democracy itself, spouting lies about postal votes and saying he may not accept the result. Will you commit here today for a peaceful Trans, uh, for all power. Well, we're going to have to see what happens. The coronavirus pandemic means this is an historic election, with states attempting to make sure it's safe and fair for every voter to exercise their democratic rights. He cannot stop you from being able to determine the outcome of this election. But with the president raising alarm, and with the counting of votes expected to take a while, many worry about what might happen after the polls close, and whether we'll get a result in hours, days, or even weeks after voting ends. With both parties hiring lawyers ready to fight their corner and with some citizens saying they'll take to the streets this is an election that will test u.s democracy like never before with the threat of coronavirus postal voting will be more popular and more crucial than ever before now most states are not used to such large-scale postal voting and many are concerned about whether all 50 states can handle the demand let's look at pennsylvania where democrats and republicans have argued over the rules for mail-in balloting in the state's highest court the court said that postal votes received three days after the election can be counted as long as they're postmarked by November the 3rd. The Republicans did challenge that ruling in the US Supreme Court. Another state ruling concerns something called naked ballots. Basically in Pennsylvania you must place your postal vote in a secrecy envelope. That must be then placed inside the envelope that you then post. If you don't place your vote in the secrecy envelope first, your vote is void. Because of this ruling, the Democratic chair of the state's election board has warned it could invalidate up to 100,000 votes in this year's election. Remember, President Trump won the state in 2016 by just over 44,000 votes. And these types of battles over the rules have been taking place in state after state between Democrats and Republicans. I spoke to Jessica Marsden from the legal group Protect Democracy about this constant back and forth. There's a ton of litigation going on right now. It's impossible to keep track of all of it. It's also normal to some extent to have uh, disagreements about the conduct of the election and with COVID throwing a wrench into every aspect of our lives, it's not surprising that there are even more this year. There are procedures in place. Those procedures have been respected even in very contentious past elections. Um, so if you look back to 2018, uh, the president was making some similar statements to the ones he's making now about the dangers of counting ballots that come in after election day. But in Arizona, the Republican Secretary of State and the Republican governor were very clear in saying every legally cast vote should be counted. I think the message is to the voters and to maybe especially to um, the media and uh, political actors is just be patient um, and wait for the votes to be counted. Most Americans will still vote in person. Some will go to early voting sites before election day. But what about those that cast their ballot on November the 3rd? Since 2013, when the Supreme Court struck down part of the historic Voting Rights Act, civil rights activists have complained about the barriers put in the way of citizens when attempting to register to vote, many of them communities of color. Those obstacles include strict voter ID laws, the purging of the electoral roll, and the closure of polling stations. One civil rights group found that more than 1,500 polling places have been shut down in the last eight years in states with a history of racial discrimination in elections. Now combine all that with the pandemic and you could have problems come election day. Let's look at the state of Georgia. Back in June during the primaries, they had an election meltdown. Firstly, many voters who requested mail-in ballots didn't get them, so they had to head to the polls in person. Then, many of them had to deal with new voting machines that were malfunctioning causing long lines. I voted. Yes, I did. Five hours later. This is wrong. You call it this is America. Please, God, help us. I mean it. Listen, this is a crisis in our world to make us not exercise our right to vote. And this again affects people of color. In a lawsuit after the June delays, an expert report found that in polling places where minorities made up more than 90% of voters, the average minimum wait time in the evening was 51 minutes. At voting places where white people made up more than 90% of voters, the average was just six minutes. There are those in power who are doing their darndest to discourage people from voting by closing polling locations and targeting minorities and students with restrictive ID laws and attacking our voting rights 
with surgical precision, even undermining the Postal Service in the run-up to an election that's going to be dependent on mail-in ballots so people don't get sick. All this leads to the big count on the evening of November the 3rd. That may take some time. Pennsylvania is one of the states where postal votes are counted only on November the 3rd. Others like Michigan can start processing mail-in ballots less than a week before election day. States like Florida and Arizona can do it more than a week before. And some, like Georgia, can do it right away from when the ballot is received. Now because of that, some have raised concerns about results night. If the election is as close as 2016, with states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin determining the outcome, that could mean we're waiting for days for the clear winner to be announced. One Democratic firm raised the alarm to Axios and HBO that the slow process of counting could lead to a possible scenario where Donald Trump could be projected to win by 408 electoral college votes to 130 on election night. But then as mail-in ballots are slowly counted, it switches and Biden wins four days later by 334 votes to 204. I spoke to Professor Edward Foley, who coined the term blue shift, where on the day votes trend to the Republicans, whereas postal votes are majority Democrat. He said the key thing is understanding that whatever happens, these votes are fair and not fraudulent. You can imagine the situation where the system actually worked, despite all the stresses of COVID and all of the challenges with the postal service, that the voters actually were able to vote and cast ballots that were genuinely identified their choice as to who they wanted. And yet that choice was repudiated, not because of a real problem, but because of a misunderstanding about the system and a make-believe problem, if you will. We'll get preliminary returns from Florida and North Carolina. So if Biden is doing particularly well early in states that are thought to be a little bit tougher for him, that suggests one picture compared to if, if President Trump is doing really well in those states and it's just much more uncertain about Michigan and Pennsylvania, that takes you down a different trajectory. Unless you get a concession speech, the, the election is still open. In some ways, the, the concession speech is the most important event as a practical matter. So what's crucial is that news networks don't project that someone is the winner on election night when it's still not clear. And the real worry is what President Trump says and does after the polls close. They're sending millions of ballots all over the country. There's fraud. A recent report by Harvard University pointed out that half of Republicans believe election fraud is a big concern due to mail-in voting, despite the consensus from experts that it's rare. And why do they believe that? The report says because of the president himself, who has set the agenda surrounding mail-in voting through a combination of tweets, press conferences, and television interviews on Fox News. And Trump is ready for a fight. He said the reason behind his rush to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the Supreme Court is that if there is a dispute and it makes its way through the courts, he wants to ensure there is a strong conservative leaning. The scam will be before the United States Supreme Court. And I think having a 4-4 situation is not a good situation. That's what happened in 2000, when the Democrats wanted a manual recount in four counties in Florida after the election finished with George W. Bush narrowly leading Al Gore in the state. Bush's team appealed against the recount, and 36 days after the election, the Supreme Court ruled in his favor 5-4, to four, handing the presidency to George W. To talk about the wider ramifications for US democracy, I spoke with journalist and historian Anne Applebaum whose most recent book looks at the rise of populist politics and democratic retreat around the world. This is absolutely one of the most consequential elections that America has had, um, at least since the Civil War. Um, and yes, I am deeply worried about what happens no matter who wins. What's really worrying about what Trump is doing is that he's using exactly the kind of rhetoric that is very often used uh, by would-be authoritarians who want to disqualify their democratic political systems. If he loses by a small margin, um, then, then yes, I do think that the Republican Party will go on and remain a Trumpist party. If he loses in a landslide, um, and if the Senate is lost as well, then it may be that the party seeks to reform itself. Of course, if he wins, um, then all bets are off, and whether there will be a normal election four years from now is very hard to say. The coronavirus pandemic has led to the death of more than 200,000 Americans and has even affected the president himself. The virus means an historic event has become an historic election with unprecedented numbers voting by mail. 
Republicans and Democrats aren't just battling over votes, they're fighting over the rules by which those ballots are accepted. None of this means democracy is on its last legs. Every vote will be counted. But the system is facing one of its biggest tests ever. If the results are close, we could be on tenterhooks for a few days after the polls close. The big worry is how both sides respond. And none of this is helped by a commander-in-chief questioning the electoral system and who is seemingly adverse to accepting defeat. This is a consequential election like no other, with a result that will be debated for years to come.